The thorough analysis of the origin of species, lesson 23. Did God make a world circling creation tour? In considering the distribution of organic beings over the face of the globe, the first great fact which strikes us is that neither the similarity nor the dissimilarity of the inhabitants of various regions can be wholly accounted for by climatical and other physical conditions. If we travel over the vast American continent, from the central part of the United States to its extreme southern point, we meet with the most diversified conditions, humid districts, arid deserts, lofty mountains, grass plains, forests, marshes, lakes, and great rivers under almost every temperature. Notwithstanding this general parallelism in the condition of the old and new worlds, their living productions are widely different. Out of these, we can arrive at the following conclusions. Faunas and floras of the old and new worlds are related to each other. Barriers or obstacles of any kind exerted influence on free migrations. The productions of the same continent or sea have affinity though the species are distinct. These indicate that the bond is simply inheritance that produces organisms quite like each other or nearly alike. According to these views, it is obvious that the several species of the same genus, though inhabiting the most distant quarters of the world, must originally have proceeded from the same source, as they are descended from the same progenitor. In the case of those species which have undergone little modifications during whole geological periods, there is not much difficulty in believing that they have migrated from the same region. It's because it is incredible that individuals identically the same should have been produced from parents specifically distinct. Charles Darwin's logic discussed up to now is condensable like a single center of supposed creation. He says, We are thus brought to the question which has been largely discussed by naturalists, namely, whether species have been created at one or more points of the Earth's surface. Undoubtedly, there are many cases of extreme difficulty in understanding how the same species could possibly have migrated from some one point to the several distant and isolated points where now found. Nevertheless, the simplicity of the view that each species was first produced within a single region captivates the mind. This shows the concept of the creation in Charles Darwin's heart. In the earlier part of these lectures, I have asked you a question. Can we say that the red peppers cultivated in tropics and in the temperate zone are different plants. This is the very answer to that question. A volcanic island, for instance, upheaved and formed at the distance of a few hundreds of miles from a continent would probably receive from it in the course of time a few colonists and their descendants though modified, would still be related by inheritance to the inhabitants of that continent. Cases of this nature are common and are, as we shall hereafter see, 
inexplicable cover on the theory of independent creation. Because a volcanic island was upheaved and formed in the middle of the sea, far distant away from the continent, it is a place of extreme difficulty in understanding how the species could have migrated from some one point to the distant and isolated points where the same species is now found. In spite of a distant place, the occurrence of the same terrestrial species on islands and on the mainland says that inhabitants on the two spots are related to each other. Can you admit the logic that the creator who produced an organic being on a continent again went to a volcanic island in order to produce separately the same things? Charles Stein's real intention is to deny the separate creation and to believe single centers of supposed creation. Means of distribution are described in the later part of the original text, chapter 13, in detail. You'd better refer to those. Shalom.